So again, we have a particle in the um, one-dimensional prism between zero and L, and we are in a state psi of x and t given by the following. So we have some coefficient a, um, two psi one of x. We know what psi one of x is, right? It's the square root of two over L sine uh, pi x over L. So we have e to the minus i e one t over h bar. Um, and we'll add a uh, psi five of x uh, e to the minus i e five t over h bar, where, of course, uh, e n is, is the usual n squared, h squared over eight m l squared. This is the mass, so that's the length of the well. Let's think about the expectation value of energy and the probability of measuring uh, different values of energy, in this case, uh, E1 or, and e, or E5, of course, zero probability of measuring any other value of energy. Um, but to get to get the expectation value of energy, we need to know what this is. Uh, so we need to normalize, so of course, zero to L of psi of X and T modulus squared. <coughs> this needs to be equal to one. Well, what do we get? Uh, so this is psi star psi. So this is, so we get a, a modulus squared. Uh, then we have um, right. So we're going to have three terms. We know how to do this. We're going to have a modulus squared. Then we're going to have uh, four psi one squared, and we're going to integrate that. And we're integrating psi 1 squared from 0 to L, but these functions are orthonormal. So we know that we'll just have this 2 squared. That's a 4 there, because when we integrate that term from 0 to L, we get 1. So just a 4 survives. Then we have the psi 5 uh, squared without any time dependence, and we're integrating that from 0 to L. And of course, that's orthonormal as well. So all the functions are orthonormal. We'll get uh, one for for that calculation, and there's nothing in front of that. Then we have the cross term, uh, the cross terms, if you will. And every whenever we integrate psi one times psi five from zero to l, orthonormality comes in and gives us zero. So our calculation looks like that. And uh, this has to be equal to one. So this is uh, a modulus squared times 5, and that has to equal to 1. And so uh, the absolute value of the modulus of A is equal to 1 over root 5. Of course, A could be right, A could be uh, 1 over root 5 e to the i theta for some value of theta, because it doesn't change any of the, uh, the physics here. So let's just leave the theta to, to, to 0, and then so we can say psi of x and t is equal to um, we have an a here, but then we have a 2 here, so it's 2 over the square root of 5, uh, psi 1 of x e to the minus i e 1 t over h bar, plus 1 over root 5, psi 5 of x e to the minus i e 5 t over h bar. <clears throat> and now we can do the expectation value of the energy. All right, we measure the energy for many such systems in this state, and every time we measure the energy, we get some value, either E1 or E5, and that's gonna be, and then we'll do an average. So it's E n equals one to infinity. <clears throat> we know that C n modulus squared times E n, that gives us the average value of energy, which in this case reduces to uh, C1 modulus squared times E1 plus uh, C5 modulus squared times E5, which is just uh, <clears throat> four fifths, right? Four fifths uh, E1 plus one fifth E5. And that's the average. So we can put these uh, values in E1 and E5 and get an actual number. But uh, E1 is weighted more 
than E5, as we can see from the fact that uh, it's, it has twice the weight, right? <clears throat> uh, let's say we ask for the probability of finding the probability that in a measurement will get E1. Uh, that's going to be just uh, C1 modulus squared, which is um, four fifths. Right? And if we look for the probability of measuring E5, that's equal to C5 modulus squared, which is equal to one fifth. And notice that these quantities are time independent. 